Today, the U.S. faces one of the most alarming aliens ever. It's already here, threatening to decimate one of the Earth's largest waterways, the Mississippi River Basin. And now, these ecosystem invaders are headed towards an even more dangerous territory, the Great Lakes. The species is rapidly approaching Lake Michigan. Ravenous, fast breeding. If these alien species colonize the biggest freshwater system in America, they could cause devastation. They've invaded nearly every waterway. Now they threaten the Great Lakes and its $7 billion industry. As research teams race against time, one of the 21st century's most frightening environmental questions may be contained in a few samples of water. And the trouble is we keep pushing the limits and we keep finding carp. The intruder, a fish with a nasty habit. When threatened, it launches like a flying projectile. Whoa. Can it be stopped? And where is it headed next? They've took it over. They're not taking it over. They've took it over. And that has some experts extremely concerned. It's America versus Asian carp. September 15, 1999, 225 kilometers from the Great Lakes, Chillicothe, Illinois. Commercial fisherman Orion Briney heads out on the Illinois River. For over 15 years, Orion's worked these waterways. Expecting buffalo fish and catfish, he pulls up his net. Usually brimming with fish, on this day, it's almost empty, but not quite. Orion spots two fish fighting hard against the net with odd-looking eyes set low on their heads. What is that? It's all weird looking. Well, we caught the first one. We pulled it up. We thought we knew what we had. We, we thought it was like a big lake trout. or Because sometimes your water gets real high, you catch a weird fish or two of some kind. Eyes on the bottom of their head. A little bit of scales on them. Orion takes one of the mystery fish to a biologist. What do you think that is? Never seen nothing like a four in my life. One look, and the scientist knows Orion's catch all too well. Carp. It's carp. Asian carp. Asian carp. Sure ugly, aren't they? No. Yeah. It's a big head carp. An unwelcome menace, more commonly known as Asian carp. And the first of what may be a thriving colony of ruthless aquatic terminators. Along with its sister species, the silver carp, Orion's big head is considered one of the most dangerous invasive creatures in America. The bad news travels fast. As soon as uh, biologists learned that these species had escaped from aquaculture ponds and were showing up in the nets of fishermen, red flags went up in, in, for every biologist. In Orion's river, the invading big head carp is perfectly designed for a hostile takeover. Able to reach as long as one and a half meters and weigh as much as 45 kilograms, in their native Asia, they're Darwinian superstars, easily adapting to most rivers, lakes, and ponds. And as they move into U.S. rivers and start aggressively feeding on plankton, they devour the food chain from the bottom up. But where in Asia, natural predators kept these carp in check, the United States has no river contenders up to the challenge. It's a formula for disaster. The Asian carp have a potential of devastating local fish populations because they're eating this food at the most basic level. It's suggested that they can eat anywhere from 40 to 80% of their body weight in a day. And it gets worse. In addition to a ravenous appetite, the Asian carp's breeding rates are in the stratosphere. While most fish spawn once a year, Asian carp can spawn up to three times a year, producing as many as two million eggs. Breeding and feeding faster than any other native fish in the river, the Asian carp obliterates the competition. The bighead and silver carp are a very scary threat because of their ability to invade an area so quickly they will kick other fish, our native fish, out in a short amount of time. But how did they get here? The answer is chilling. 
Like many invasive species, these dangerous intruders were deliberately brought by human hands. 50 years ago, in the 1960s, Midwest commercial fish farmers and water treatment authorities were looking to solve a problem, algae overgrowth. Their solution? Import an Asian fish species known for devouring algae, the grass carp. Last summer, one-third of Robert Harrell's 70-acre lake was filled with water weeds. Harold stocked the lake with carp, and his weed problems were practically solved in two months. You can tell they have really done quite well. I believe we put 350 in here, and in just a little time, it was all gone. It worked so well, a decade later, more catfish farmers fighting fishery overgrowth imported two other Asian carp species with the same taste for algae, the big head and the silver carp. But what seemed like an ideal solution was an ecosystem ticking time bomb. Summer 1993. Torrential thunderstorms pound the American Midwest. 50,000 homes are damaged or destroyed. A thousand levees fail. The end result is devastating. But there's an even more disastrous consequence. The normally disconnected rivers, lakes, and streams of the Mississippi River Basin flood together, forming one giant bathtub. To a then relatively obscure fish, it's the perfect escape. Captive carp find a path to freedom, riding floodwaters into open waterways spawning fast and furious, swimming further into rivers and tributaries throughout the Midwest. Brought to America to suck up algae, and then escaped and multiplied, earning the nickname River Rabbits. An unnatural disaster had begun. Now, for the man who first found this terrifying alien species in his own backyard, the fish is freshwater public enemy number one. Soon after his first sighting, Orion watches an ecosystem under siege. The big head is so much larger and stronger than native fish, none of the local fishermen have nets strong enough to hold the invaders. The first year or two, I just don't want to fish for them. You can come out here and, and literally see 40 acres of them. There'd be so many you couldn't even run the motor through them. You start running your motor through them, and there'd be red blood behind you. When we went out there, you don't even turn them nets up. It wasn't very long after the most of your fishermen quit fishing. And there's more to this menace. With no natural predators in the Illinois River, the big head multiply at astronomical rates, taking over and dominating the food chain. While alarmed fish and wildlife agencies try to strategize comprehensive solutions, they are big, ugly, and abundant. A nearby processing plant decides to harvest and sell Asian carp as food. In a desperate attempt to save his own livelihood, Orion modifies his gear to stand up to the aggressive invader. I had the first nets built, and I was the first one on them. Orion once harvested buffalo fish and catfish. Post-Asian carp invasion, the fish have all but disappeared. Orion's only solution? Change his business model. Make the alien species his catch. He recruits his stepson Jeremy and 13-year-old grandson Levi. Yet even with a team, Asian carp catching is challenging. You know, it's just completely, you know, completely different ball game. You gotta hold more nets, you gotta make bigger nets. July 9th, 2009, Chillicothe, Illinois. Orion and his two boat crew head out to capture the invasive car. Man, we got fish already. <laughs> he reads the water, looking for signs of a pack of big head below. The goal, net as many of this marauding threat as fast as possible. Orion 
knows these fish spook easily. They fly into the air at the first sign of noise and commotion, a fight or flight stress response that can dangerously injure fishermen. Skittish Asian carp scatter fast. Moving carefully, the boats will have to hit the right spot at the right moment. You gotta be real aggressive when you see them. I mean, you can't sit here and talk and tell, you know, you gotta get right with it, get around them and get them shut off, or they're gone. You say, well, I thought there was a bunch of fish here. Well, there was, but so they just, they, they beat you. Orion picks a spot in the middle of the river. That's where they're at, right here. Get ready. The boats start dropping over 27,000 meters of net. Spreading out, they make their way towards shore, covering the river's entire width. But now, Orion's crew tries to gather the carp using one of the most primitive fishing techniques on Earth, noise. What the men are about to raise in their nets may be proof of a threat far greater than any fisherman's livelihood. An eco-disaster, a raging river invader breeding out of control. Chillicothe, Illinois, 225 kilometers from the Great Lakes. Fisherman Orion Briney and his team are on the hunt for an invasive Asian carp menace, the Big Head. Now, with nets strategically placed across the width of the Illinois River, it's time to raise hell, literally. To herd the fish towards them, the crew stomps and bangs the boat's aluminum hulls. Beneath the waters, the distressed fish pick up the vibrations through organs that run along their sides, called neuromasts. Interpreting the vibrations as a predator on the hunt, fleeing big heads swim straight for the nets. They're, they, they're very smart. You, once they hear a noise, they're, they're taking off. I would run back and forth and try to bring them into a big school and hurt them down, force them into the net. Meter by meter, Orion's crew pulls up bursting nets. Now, to get the fish to market, it's a race against the sun's baking heat. How are we doing up here? How many we got left? A fish this size will hurt you. A fish this size will probably put you in the hospital if you're going up the river and break something, you know, or even knock you out of the boat, and then there you are. Four hours and 15 nets later, thousands of invasive big head Asian carp pack the holds of Orion's boats. From ship to truck, it's an hour and a half drive to one of the few processing plants with the capacity to handle enormous volumes of Asian carp. Here, the fish are unloaded and weighed. 1,944 big heads, 81 carp, We're just right. Today's catch, over 9,000 kilograms. It's a good harvest for what's become an unexpected family business, doing battle with an alien species. Some of Orion's catch will be filleted and packed for distribution to overseas markets. There, the fish are consumed as food. But in the U.S., there's a problem. Asian carp flesh is filled with tiny bones. The U.S. market for these bony fish as human food is non-existent. Yet many fear, unless we start eating Asian carp by the truckload, we have no chance of stopping their onslaught. And while commercial fishermen struggle to stay in business, according to biologist Dwayne Chapman, exporting these fish as fast as they can be caught isn't enough. It's hardly making a dent in an invasive disaster threatening a continent. Orion is just one fisherman, and 20,000 pounds of fish is nothing. I estimate that um, last year, about 2 million pounds of fish were captured, big head and silver carp together, for market. And that is not a drop in the bucket. Many scientists fear the invasive eco-destruction is getting worse by the day. And although in 2007, U.S. Fish and Wildlife made it illegal to import or breed silver carp, 
Big Head and Black Carp have yet to be federally banned, even as populations continue to grow. July 12, 2009, Havana, Illinois, over 300 kilometers from the Great Lakes, the so-called Asian carp capital. Here, the ongoing carp invasion has created such dense populations, boaters are forced to be vigilant, always on the lookout for a rampaging species just as menacing as the big head, the silver carp. With their notorious hair trigger fear response, some compare a silver carp collision to being hit by a bowling ball at several kilometers an hour. As one of the world's top invasive fish experts, Dwayne Chapman is leading the charge in the battle against this leaping aquatic threat. I've been eating, breathing, sleeping these fish, trying to get under their skin, trying to figure out everything I can about them in order to know my enemy. Hi, Hi Kevin. Come aboard. Today, as part of a fact-finding mission, tracking invading silver carp on the move, Dwayne and fellow biologist Kevin Irons board a specially rigged boat designed for a unique task, electrofishing. This is our electrofishing boat. Um, we use it for routine surveying of fish. You can go to a spot, you put roughly about 5,000 watts worth of electricity into the water. It'll temporarily stun the fish, where biologists can then dip them up. Yeah, here's a big mouth. Electrofishing is one way scientists take sample inventories of all the fish species competing for survival in a river. For every fish they net, they noted species, size, and weight, evaluating the overall health of both natives and invasives. As the team works, they face the silver carp's explosive defense strategy. Protect yourself. Fish leaping by the hundreds, Good Lord. reaching as high as three meters. And it's just a fright response. Anything that scares them, and they tend to go airborne. And they can jump at speeds of probably at least 20 knots or so. Although Asian carp have infiltrated rivers from Louisiana to Minnesota, today, Dwayne focuses his investigation here on the Illinois. So close to the Great Lakes, this is a critical front line against an eco-catastrophe. Dwayne wants to know how the invaders are thriving and migrating. His ultimate goal? Zero population. This is a paddlefish. It's one of the filter feeding fishes that we're trying to protect by controlling the big head and silver carp. A really odd looking prehistoric fish, been around for a long time. It'd be a real shame to have these guys get hurt by this and by the invading big head and silver carp. Okay, let's get him back in the water. Keeping the juice on, the shocker arms release steady electric jolts. The jolts successfully stun the bulk of the Asian carp below. Yet the fastest fish react by taking to the air. Soon, the team hits the mother load. When you get them coming in, it's, it's, it's all you can do to dodge and, and get your hands up. Uh, you you want to protect yourself. It's like being in, inside a popcorn popper. You know, there's just fish everywhere. Only the difference is that the fish can, you know, instead of being little kernels of popcorn, you've got fish that range from six inches up to 25 pounds that are flying through the air. But today, they're about to discover something far more frightening. Five, five, six. Measuring the weight and length of the stunned fish, the biologists note something unusual. Instead of a normal rounded body shape, these silver carp are long and narrow. And this particular fish, as you can see, it has, it's kind of flat across the top. It kind of reaches the top a point right there behind the head, and it's, it, uh, it's kind of flat from there on back. This fish should be rounded. It's a bad sign. To the scientists trained eyes, the silver carp are starving. The implications are grave. When it comes to feeding, silver carp are top-notch competitors. They muscle out almost all other species. Big head and silver carp are the most highly advanced filter feeding fishes in freshwater in the world. And so it's pretty hard for our native fishes to compete with that. If top competitor silver carp are starving, native fish species don't stand a chance. It's how an invasive like the Asian carp wreaks havoc, feeding until there's nothing left to feed on, starving out all other species, eventually starving themselves. The only solution 
is to move on to the next waterway in food supply. Here, it's the beginning of the end of the once vital Illinois River and the beginning of the end of America's freshwater fisheries. After dedicating much of his career to the Agent Carp scourge, Duane believes the electrofishing evidence reveals a crisis now reaching a critical mass, a crisis that might have been prevented. When they hit the Illinois River and Missouri River, the po populations just skyrocketed. All of a sudden, we had tons of fish. In hindsight, we could have and should have prevented their arrival in North America. The statistics are terrifying. With silver and bighead carp, the most dangerous invasive offenders, Asian carp species currently make up an astonishing 80% of the total Upper Mississippi River Basin's biomass. Roughly 2,500 fish for every kilometer of river. Populations so enormous, some speculate a total takeover may be impossible to stop. Carp are right there knocking at the door. So uh, we need to do something soon. September 10, 2009. At the Aquatic Center for Conservation at the University of Notre Dame, Professor David Lodge heads an invasive species task force. As an Asian carp Armageddon looms, the task force is fighting back with a cutting edge tool. For invasive species in, in lakes and rivers, one of the big challenges is often just figuring out where the darn organisms are. And uh, it, it's like searching for a needle in a haystack. Dr. Lodge and his team have developed a solution for finding the needle in the haystack, locating Asian carp without having to catch a single fish. It's called environmental DNA testing. Just as CSI teams collect DNA samples from criminal evidence, Dr. Lodge's team tests water samples for traces of Asian carp DNA. If they get a positive hit, Asian carp have passed through the test sample's water source. Using this method, the team can test large bodies of water relatively quickly. It's an efficient diagnostic tool that's never been used to fight an invasive aquatic species until now. The hard work is done back in the laboratory, but that too is relatively quick compared to the effort required to electroshock or net fish uh, in, in a lake or a river. Yep, so I think that still sounds like uh, what we want to do is start upstream, yep. get the most urgent information first. Armed with breakthrough genetic detection, Professor Lodge's team heads to what may be the single most dangerous Asian carp front line, the Chicago Sanitarium Ship Canal. In 1900, to prevent sewage from entering Lake Michigan, contaminating the city's drinking water, the city of Chicago came up with an idea, reversing the direction of the Chicago River. The result? an ingenious feat of engineering called the Sanitary and Ship Canal. Today, the canal is an important route for cargo ships. But when humans connected the Mississippi River Basin to Lake Michigan, no one predicted that they were building a disastrous invasive species superhighway. The Great Lakes have on the order of 186 species that are non-native, many of which are damaging. And there are dreaded cautionary tales. One exotic species already doing major environmental and economic damage is the zebramsel. After hitching rides from Europe in the ballasts of cargo ships, these mollusks have quickly multiplied and clogged up industrial pipes. Zebra mussels caused the shutdown of the Monroe Power Plant in Michigan, which cost millions of dollars. This is one of the most damaging environmental changes that's been going on since humans started moving species. Here, 30 miles from the entrance to the Great Lakes, the team picks a strategic spot. It's downstream from the last line of man-made defense, an electric underwater fence. In 2002, 
authorities installed rows of steel cables across a section of the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal. Today, bolts of DC current flow from the cables into the water, delivering harmless but critical fish repelling shocks. When it comes to stopping the northward migration of the invasive Asian carp, this single electric fence may stand between control and catastrophe. But many experts fear the barrier is far from foolproof. Is it truly enough to stop an invader from river domination? The barrier needs to be turned off every six months for a short period of time to rehabilitate it. If you turn off the thing and they're, and they're sitting there at the door, um, they're going to swim through. Back in the lab, the team submits their samples for DNA tests. What the water reveals is shocking. The Asian carps were several miles upstream from where people had thought they were. It was exciting to discover that we learned something important. On the other hand, it was depressing because the problem is so much more acute than we thought previously. It's confirmed. Carp are less than 11 kilometers from the electric fence barrier. All that separates the silver carp from the Great Lakes now is one lock and the electric barrier that the Army Corps of Engineers has installed. What began as a field test now becomes an urgent investigation. The next critical test location is the Chicago River. Lindsay Chatterton with the Great Lakes Project heads up the investigation. So we are in downtown Chicago. This is the last lock uh, through which boats pass to get onto Lake Michigan itself. Discovering Asian carp DNA here would mean disaster. If there's a positive hit, it's proof the fish have gone further and slipped past the electric barrier. I think these fish are much further up the system than anyone previously thought, um, and, and really we don't know how far up they are. Targeting backwater pockets where DNA collects, the team fills two liter bottles, noting location, depth, and temperature. There's no real barrier to stop the fish from here moving into Lake Michigan, um, so we clearly don't want to find them here. Back at the lab, the clock is ticking on a potential environmental time bomb. The team puts the samples on ice to slow any DNA degradation and begins testing for Asian carp DNA. I hope and pray that they won't see anything uh, upstream from the barrier. But while Dr. Lodge's lab team waits for results... Focus your chi, Tim. Do what? Focus your chi. I think that's some kind of zen thing, isn't it? Over 160 kilometers away, some anglers are taking a more direct approach, it, brother. fighting an invasive killer head on. All right, guys, here we go. August 22nd, 2009, 251 kilometers from the Great...